Hello and welcome to Game Brain, a podcast about our gaming group. I'm Ben Mandelker, and joining me today is Paul Satachit. Hey, everyone. Well, hi, Paul. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm look gonna... at look at you jumping right in, jumping taking right in. the reins in a way that we've always been waiting for. Oh, look at me! Like this, this taking a, a proactive uh, role in my life, like you know. Ditching off that sidekick energy and becoming the main character. I know. Now it means it's time for me to recede. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, Paul? Uh, I'm doing well. I, I I have, you know, Thai food and milkshake in my stomach. So uh, I don't know how long I'm going to last, but we're going to see. You are so <laughs> lucky. I have not too much in my stomach. I have like a croissant from earlier in the oh. day that I picked up and ate. <laughs> so you're driven by hunger. Well, I tried to. I so I tried to be good to myself by making myself a um, a healthy vegetarian late lunch where I made broccolini with a farro, and I was like, I need to, you know, because I'm trying to like lower my blood pressure a little bit. So I'm like, let me have this healthy thing, and the goddamn dish was so salty. <laughs> I was like, I hate what I hate when I make something healthy and I get punished for it. Oh, that's that's worse. Um, but it's probably my fault somewhere along the way. It tasted really good. Just Wait, was oversalted. You so cooked it, right? I cooked it. I punished myself. <laughs> the point is this: I don't have something as beautiful as what you have, and I'm teetering into hunger as we record, which means I'm going to be more of a lunatic than usual. And I hope everyone, including you, is ready for this. I I, I am not ready for it, but we will we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, well, uh, tell me what's going on. So uh, we're here to talk some board games. Board games, love it. I have just spent a week in New York, Mm -hmm. so I really didn't get to play any games, except I played a virtual game. But you did get to play not only a real game, but a hot real game. Yep. What Uh, did you play? So uh, Matt Robinson, like, uh, got Invention. Yeah, by Vital Lacerda. by, uh, By Lacerda, and we played it. And yeah, I, well, had a, I had a great time. I came in dead last. Uh, but, you know, I thought it was, it was, let's see, how should I say it? I'm not always inventive. Big, inventive. That's right. It, it had, it had some innovation. No, nope, that's different, different game. Can't, yeah, I can't, I can't di- do the puns, Ben. That's not fair. It's from a different age. It's from uh, a different age. Uh, but like, uh, uh, I'm not, I'm not always a big Lacerda fan as, yeah. Uh, I'm not. I don't believe the gallery is the end all be all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that said, like I felt like this was interesting enough that I uh, that I stayed engaged. Came dead last, but that's okay. I, we don't have to win to be. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, I will fun. say, like when I play Lacerda games, uh, especially the first time, the learning game, I'm just pulling uh, levers. That's okay too. Yeah, yeah. No, they, but you're trying to win though. You're 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 not. You're uh, you're still trying to be an active member of the table. Yes, I'm I'm, I'm being I'm, I'm playing with a strategy in mind, but like my my overall is trying to see how this works. Like you try yeah. to win the second and third game, but if you only play the one mechanism that you understand in a certain game, it's you're it's, you're going to be miserable. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, I did something that I don't normally do, and I played with Tom versus against Tom. Wow. <laughs> Okay, so so you know that didn't uh, dead last, so it, it doesn't matter. But like you know, but there were times where we go like, "Hey, we're gonna do this," and you know, uh, uh, and at what point did he backstab you? He did not really backstab me. Here, here's the thing that made me really irritated uh, is that he was ahead of me in turn order, yeah, right ahead of me, and when I would want to do something like that was like really beneficial for me. Like Jordan would advise Tom, here's what you should do, Tom. Oh, okay, so at what point did Jordan like, catch you with a knife? Always out of the gate. <laughs> He's always out of the gate. Like, you By know. the way, I love Tom and Jordan. I just love to get them shit on the podcast because yeah, yeah. it's fun. Uh, but like, you know, but he, it, it, it's well, you know, Jordan has his, his <laughs> like, oh, I'm just playing. Oh, you know, like, no, I, I'm, I'm not doing that well. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> like, he, like he, he's, he's beating us by like, you know, like orders of and magnitudes. People wait, but I, I feel like one thing that we have never really established, or maybe we just don't establish it enough, is that Jordan is a really good board game player. Yeah. And he often just like once he like puts his foot on the pedal, you're just left you're left behind. So as much as we talk about like, oh, Jordan's a killer, 
Uh, let's not take away from the fact right. that he's also he wins these games right. with his own adeptness. Uh, he 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 knows how to play games. He, yes, you know. And here's the thing, and I I'm going to say on the podcast, he's in his prime, where we're on the decline. Because, yeah, because I was going like, oh look at that, like I can see my age coming into play now, where like Jordan like is is he's only going to get sharper for the next for for, 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 for the next for ten next, years. 10 to 15 years, he's only going to get sharper. Yeah, like, you know, uh, and so I'm going like, oh, this is where I ha- might have experience, but this requires some processing power, and I'm either not willing or unable to put in that processing power that that is fairly easy for Jordan right now. Right. And I was like, oh, that's really interesting. It's the first time I've ever noticed that in, in a game. Can you tell me what this game actually is about and what it is? I don't know anything. The elevator pitch. The elevator pitch is it is a Civ game. Which it it isn't, okay. but, you know. But basically, you are a coming up with ideas, inventing things, and spreading ideas into the world. Mm. And as you do that, you get points. Oh, and yeah. That, that, that's it. Like okay. and so, and and there are various ages. So like, at one time, you're uh, you're learning how to trade. That's a technology trade. Okay. And by era six or five, you're you have the internet. Okay. And so like in they're worth various amounts of points. There's some uh, area of control, and the actions all make sense enough. Mm-hmm. And the theme is okay enough. Yeah. You know, but I really had a, a good time, like, like wrestling with it, I suppose. Like, you mm-hmm. know, I, I think the thing that I like the most, and I don't normally like this, is that other people don't block your move. You block your move. So what do you mean by that? So, so like there are ten actions and they're in two columns, uh, and so like two it's five. So like let's say you put one of your pawns in a like like the first column in the first row, then you cannot use the first column, a second uh, second a uh, second column first row. Mm. So where you put your your little pieces blocks where you can put your next pieces okay so that controls uh, a little bit of what you can do and there's this uh chaining aspect that you get to do if certain actions allow you certain other actions and so you're trying to build these combos uh with with your actions knowing that like some actions are not available to you because of what you designed i'm right and so, you know, like, I know it sounds a little... It, it, no, that sounds very Lacerda, which yeah. is like, I feel like with Lacerda games, sometimes I feel this mm-hmm. like chicken and egg thing. Like mm-hmm. you have to do the, like you have to lay the egg, but you need the chicken first. And like, that, like, that is like the, where is the on-ramp to yeah, the exactly. loop that's going around and, and, the know, city? And, and there was some talk about on Mars and how, you know, there's like there's on a Mars, cycle there. it's like there's a cycle that you need to find. And in this game... It's probably less of one, but I don't know. Like, I, I played one game, so, and, and I yeah. came in three. I'm not the best person to talk about it. But I really respect what you're saying because you and I are the only two people, it seems, in this entire group that really had a lukewarm at best response to Weather Machine. And people have been trying to convince us since then. And I, by the way, and I have, I will play it again. I'm actually, it's been removed enough now that I'm totally down to revisit mm-hmm. Weather Machine, which is, you know, let's talk about the the, sure. the topic from last episode, which is like a game second that you chances. were met at. Yeah, second chance, a second wind game. I mean, maybe, no pun intended, that would be a perfect Weather Machine. Weather Machine would be a perfect second wind game for me, I think. I'm so good but, at this pun. So good. Yeah, yeah. What can I say? <laughs> But um, uh, yeah, we were both were very lukewarm on yeah. Weather Machine, and so what? The reason why I'm saying this is because it it means to me that you are not a Lacerda apologist. Yeah, not no. saying that everyone else in our group is, but you, I think, will be the least at this point, according to my experiences. Because mm-hmm. as far as I'm, I know, it seems like everyone else really enjoys Lacerda. So. This me. I'm just, what I'm trying to say is, it means it's it means something to me that you mm-hmm. didn't like Weather Machine, but you do like this game. Yeah, no, uh, I think uh, Tom had a few reservations about it because Tom didn't like the fact that you or one was blocking their self as opposed to having the interaction of like I take an action mm. and you can't take that. Like kind of like like yeah, to let them would be uh, an example of that like you know I do something you can't do that thing because I took. What, you know, anyway. Well, is the where is where does the interaction come in the game then? 
the interaction comes down to uh, area control in, in the center, and basically, uh, what do you call it when you take something that someone else needs? Passive aggression. Oh, sure, 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 sure. <laughs> Some people would say that's passive aggressive. Yeah. Um, but like you know, in the, like in board game sense, yeah. like it's 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 like a passive intera- indirect so, interaction. Yeah, and so like if Tom had planned the things that Jordan was suggesting to him to, to do, that would be what the interaction would be because Tom twice stymied me in a way that was like, like I just started yelling, not yelling at, wow. at Jordan, but I was going, damn it, Jordan. <laughs> like I have no problem if Tom found this by himself, but like, you know, like you like mapping out how this is going to play for him. <laughs> it's not my favorite. And here's the thing. That's hilarious. I do it all the time. Yeah, you know, you know, listen, <laughs> you know, so 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 it, you, it, it, you know, so it's it's you know, good for on, the gander on on Watcher Crappens. Mm-hmm. Ronnie and I always say that we are members, card carrying members of the Hippocratic Party, which is that, <laughs> like we're like, we complain about things all the time that we actively do. Yeah, I mean, I do that. I do it all the time. I no. point out constantly what people should be doing, and then when someone, I mean, I'm still traumatized from Democracy last year when mm-hmm. Jordan made sure that everyone knew that I was in the league, sure, sure, sure. and then everyone piled on me. I was so angry by that, and yet I have frequently done things like that. So you know, I guess that's the joy of board gaming, right? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> can, like you know, like can, you, you can be lean your on best worst self. Yeah, we can lean on to our <laughs> hypocrisies. Um, so when you take like, so you can block yourself in the game, but you don't block an action for someone else. So people can take the same action you take. Yes, and, and like that, and the cost of that, or the is that. It, it may give you some like like if I'm in, if my big pillar is in a square and then someone moves into that square, I get a an extra bump on like influence or something like that. So well, I mean, so that's, I mean, those kind of interactions I think are always fun because mm-hmm. you're weighing. You're not saying how can I deprive someone, yeah. but like what benefits do I want to give someone? Which is, by the way, not too unlike something like sure. Hansa Teutonica. No, Hansa no. Tonica is based on that, where now you are going places hoping that you get mm-hmm. bumped. And maybe with inventions, like maybe part of it is that in an initial play, you're just doing your own thing and trying to find success. But as you get experience with it, the emergent mm-hmm. strategy is like, actually, it's more important for me to go where people are going to go. Gonna go. I mean, were the bonuses significant mm-hmm. enough like that? Uh, it, it was worth 10 points to Tom. He, he played that game like, you know, oh. Here's where people need to be. I want to go here now. So there's a certain right. understanding of the rhythm that works out. Uh, yeah. So maybe he'll feel more of that interaction as other people uh, play it like that as well. Maybe. maybe. Like you know, like I, I think, I think there's an interesting little. I don't want to say little, but like a, a shift in a, the gaming paradigm. And I, 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 I don't know if I'm over speaking, but like I feel like there was a style of a game where denial was a thing. Where you mm-hmm. go like, oh, I'm gonna do this, you can't do this, and like, and you go, oh, I should have done that earlier. Right. I should like, you know, Cusco uh, is yeah, of that sure. Era. Like Agricola is that way, right? Agricola, yeah. So, uh, so, and that, and there is value in that type of game, but the inverse now it seems to be one of, oh well, who am I gonna be helping? You know, like mm-hmm. if 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 I do this, I might help this person here, and they might win. So then I now I can't do that. I'm not being blocked by. So you're. So in some ways, it's almost a more interesting uh, space if you can get into it where you are making these considerations of like, you know, helping this person may in fact be your demise. Mm. You know, like, you know, or and so then there's this balance weighing of like, oh, how much do I help someone? You know, like, I, I think that's a, a worthwhile space to explore. And so right. in this way, I feel like the mechanic that is established does that. Um, yeah, it makes me think of... Um when you said deprivation, I obviously I went to uh, Western Empires. Speaking of trauma games, and the only reason <laughs> I'm actually the only reason why I'm really wedging that in is because this is a tangent. But I don't know if you heard, but um, there is going to be a. I just learned this on the Blue Peg Pink Peg podcast uh-huh. that Western Empires is returning this year. Oh wow! As Mega Empires, the West English edition and. Um, I think there's going to be Mega Empires the East. But anyway, for people who are wanting um, Western Empires that didn't get their hands on it, 
Um, it's mm-hmm. going to be coming back. It's mega empires because there was mega civilization, mm-hmm. which then became Western empires. So just want to put that out there right, for well, well, there you go. for right. this thing. I'm sorry, I got I just got very distracted by no, no, the no, idea. No, it's no, like no, the, no, you're what you're talking about. I'm hungry. <laughs> what you're talking about though, the deprivation, mm-hmm. the the, the paradigm, yeah, the yeah. paradigm shift. I think it's okay to, that we've moved away from those like, Not like those intense. I don't I don't know. Actually, I don't know because mm-hmm. I feel like Agricola. What makes Agricola so fun is that, like, and so sh- is the stress that it induces. Sure, sure. For me, I'm not like, no, no, I'm not playing it on that competitive level where there's it's different, there. yeah. but like, it's that stress that, like, you have like one, you, right now you have to make a Sophie's choice sure. between like wood and reeds and this and that and children and sheep and whatever. And it's like every turn is like that. And it's so intense. Mm-hmm. And like when I look at something like Fields of Arl, which is more like you can do every, anything you want. How do you edit? It doesn't have it, it's intense, but in a different way. And so there is something really good about mm-hmm. that deprivation aspect, that deprivation paradigm that you talk about. Yeah. But I think that sometimes the deprivation paradigm teeters into like punishing gameplay in a way that's like so yeah, yeah. not always fun. Like so, I, I had this conversation with. Uh, uh, a millennial. I am not a millennial. Uh, but like, uh, and we're talking about, uh, I say bullying mm-hmm. or, or maybe, maybe, uh, hurt feelings. Uh-huh. Like, you know, and so like in, in a certain generation, like, like, you know, as the younger the generation is right now, the more premium it is that like you are, your feelings don't get hurt by people intentionally, mm-hmm. particularly. Right. Whereas when I was growing up, that was sport. Mm. Like your ability to take and give bullying was a metric of whether, you know, like you were worthy, you know, right, it, like it, how tough like, you are. Exactly. Like Thor's hammer kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And so, and I would say like, you know, we've moved away from that as a society, like, you know, in some, in some areas, but like, I feel like there was some value in that. In the same way, like there is value in the game deprivation type, you know, like, mm-hmm. you know, like where you're, you're knife fighting. Right. Uh, uh, there, I think there is value in like that and not being um, coddled in life. Right. 100%. Like you yeah. want to be able to face tough things mm-hmm. and you want to be able to learn how to push through and persevere in, in a safe I, space, in a safe space. But mm-hmm. I think what's happened is that we have a, we've ha- had a growing awareness of how a lot of times there are a lot of toxic elements that come with that. Sure. And so it's about trying to get the benefits of these situations while trying to weed out the toxic elements. And for some people weeding out the toxic elements actually translates to let's weed out all of the difficult elements. And I think that's, that's a very apt way of putting it. I think in, in a way, like, you know, what is the difference between a game that's punishing Versus a game that is like, you know, engaging in right. that way. Like, you know, there's a, that line. I, and I think that like sometimes if you are feeling punished by a game or a person mm-hmm. in a gaming situation, if you're feeling bad, like what I try to weed out is when people try to make me feel bad because they need it to feel better about themselves, which is like very mm-hmm. trite. It's like, that's sure, like sure, sure, elementary sure. school. People put you down because they want to mm-hmm. make them feel, make themselves, make themselves feel better. But there are a lot of people who do do that to kind of empower themselves because they're not empowered in other areas of their life and or they want to teach a lesson they want to do something that like they're there's kind of like exorcising something mm-hmm. and when you feel that energy it's not nice and you're like that was what you just did was toxic and you were just like you are at the end of a cycle. Like there was some cycle that happened mm-hmm. in your life. It could be generational. Sure. It could be just a cycle that happened in the workplace, but it has now come through you. This is like the ring, right? Like <laughs> you have to pass it on otherwise. Yeah. And it's like, now you're putting that onto me and you're making me part of your cycle. And you know, sure. I might have to pass it on now because it's in me. Yeah. I'm not saying I think about when that happens, I don't think these things, but I feel like on some level oh, sure. in a flash, these are all the emotions you feel. And when you feel that, it just, it feels unfair. It feels unjust. Mm-hmm. And it feels like, why didn't you get your shit sorted out before you took it out mm-hmm. on me? Yeah. But there are other times when I think people are harsh and it feels like they're harsh because they, they want to, they, they actually see something in you and they, they know that 
that you'll be able to take it and this is going to sort of like move the needle mm-hmm. a little bit more in your life to being able to handle tougher situations. Yeah, like, like, uh, uh, Trey, you know, uh, we'll all fit and say like, you know, like, you know, he does a, a, a like a hard move and goes like, you know, respect. He'll say that respect mm. because like, you know, it's going to be like, I know that you can take this. This is not because, you know, I'm being mean. He'll say that. Whereas like, you know, now with this Lacerda game, for example, like, it almost removes that. Mm-hmm. It removes all, in some ways, it removes all the, like, punishing aspect, not all, but, like, you know, the, the, the aspect of, like, oh, I'm doing this to you. Right. You know, uh, and uh, and now the the burden is, like, okay, without that, without that pressure, you know, can you still thrive? Mm-hmm. You know, like, it, it's a different, it's a different mentality completely. Right. Which, you know, in some ways, it's a more contemporary thought process right now right where like where do you where do you give your attention where do you you know where do you give your favor because Mm -hmm. you're going to have to probably and if you give it to the wrong person or uh they're going to beat you right and i think that sometimes like as much as i'd love the agricola style and agricola is just going to become our our example of this of like a blocking Mm -hmm. you know and this is not leading to a but like i have i don't have any issues with Mm -hmm. agricola Sure, sure Um, sometimes there are some games where you feel like the blocking or the, the, or the player versus player interaction is sort of like a, a big distraction from the actual fun of the game. Mm -hmm. Like the fun, like sometimes the blocking is just like, Oh, you block me. I don't have any more meaningful choices to make. And therefore I can't access the meat of this game right now. I like that. Whereas like with Agricola, you block me, I have to do something else. And same with Cusco, by mm-hmm. the way. You know, I will probably do a deep dive, a proper deep dive with Cusco soon. We've been, certainly been like flirting with it enough. But Cusco is the sort of game where you will frequently shut down an action spot for someone. And it will, it has often, especially when people are playing for the first time, and created sore feelings. Um, I'm saying this not to pick on Tom, but the first time when we played with Tom, mm-hmm. it, like in that first round, it seemed like he was put at a disadvantage because of this, because of turn order. But it turns out the game just sends you in a different path. Sure. And that's also super fun. And so whenever a game can, I think, can give you different paths sure. that are as a, fun. As opposed to like throw you into a dead end. Yeah. Then then I think the blocking is good. Although there was when I played with Matt, Matt did have to take like the consolation spot once or twice. And so yeah. he was feeling a little bit of the dead end. Oh, well then. So maybe Cusco is not the best example, but Agricola, I think there's always something to do in Agricola. Sure. Sure. The speaking, point, of, speaking of Matt, speaking of Matt, like, so one of the things that Matt Robinson, that is more, yeah, uh, fearless is, leader of is, our podcast is that he, he started a BGA, a board game arena game of terraform Lars. Uh, and I'm not a big fan of this game. I know I am a big fan. Huh? I, okay. I need like to, most people are. I, 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 I need to play. I, I, I am not. I have a big box sitting right yeah. there. I've got that freaking big box, and has not been ever since. That big box is a curse. I kickstarted it, and I used to get that game to the table reliably. And as soon as I got that big box, it was like off. Uh, off the radar. No one wanted to touch it. No one wants to play Terraforming Mars with me anymore. So, so we were talking about how uh, Matt is a person who is hot on games, right? And so when when he's into Agricola, he's like, I don't know if we're playing any other game. Agricola is yeah, the best say, game ever. He was like, it's the most exciting thing happening it's, in our hobby right now. That's right. <laughs> and then, like, you know, and so uh, he, uh, terraforming, got, got into BGA. I don't know why we play anything else. This is, this is just the best game. And then he pulled out the big box. You know what? The big box is pretty. <laughs> like, the, the, the components are great. I, I love them. Like, I didn't see them before. But but, but he, 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 he pulled out his big box. Yeah. And, and just and I was like, oh, wow, this is, this is actually very good. Yeah. They're really pretty components, which is why I sit here and I stare at it and I don't ever play it. Well, actually, that's that's my fault. I don't think I, I advocate for it enough. It, it, I just like to blame other people sometimes. Sure, sure, sure. sure. Hypocrisy. Yeah. That's <laughs> anyway, how we get through. So, uh, so I'm we're playing uh, we're playing Terror for Mars online uh, async, and to my surprise, I'm having a great time. Wow. Yeah, I'm having I'm, I'm having a great time. I'm going like, oh, this is. Maybe async is the way, you know, because sometimes async are, is better for some games. And I would like to just, by the way, point out, because mm-hmm. it has been an issue 
uh, that has come up on this podcast in this group, the five player game issue mm-hmm. that Terraforming Mars does play five players. And in fact, I do believe I did suggest it as a five player game once and it was shot down by everyone. Like, so I would like the court to know I am innocent of 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 like, the charges that I don't advocate for Terraforming Mars. Uh, fair enough. And you know what? It seems to me that like sometimes we get into these cycles, I whether know. it be in our our, our, pre- I think I our, just, our, our lives. I just <laughs> unleashed some generational terraforming Mars trauma on you. Anyway, so yeah, I'm having this time, good this good enough time, like this, this good time. I'm, I'm enjoying. I'm 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 going back to BGA. Like the Trey move yet? Like he, he's he's like on a plane. Yeah, and I'm like ah, oh, he didn't have internet. Damn it, you know. Like and so whatever. And then I get this card, you know, where I go like oh. I can I could knock out like, uh, like you know some plants, and, and the only and the only plant person that is really worthy to knock out is Matt because he has it not. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to do that because I'm having a good time. You're it, not going to unleash your generational trauma uh, on yeah. Matt by destroying three of his yeah. you know basil plants. Yeah, and, and so today I was at the Thai restaurant. I go and look at my and Matt has moved. It's my turn. Turns out he dropped an asteroid on me, and it, it wiped out six of my plants. Do you still have the card where you can destroy his I plants? I did, and I, and I unleashed back at him, but like, I was so livid. I was so livid at him. I go like, ah, you know, I don't, I don't love this game, but I'm playing because of friendship. And I, I know exactly this feeling. This happened. That was me with Western Empire. It was, it was. That was me where I'm like, I don't really want to play this game, but I'm going to do it because I know like this is important for Tom, etc., and I was like, I'm going to do it. And then I wasn't really liking it. And then when I got like, when everything went to shit, I was like, I don't even want to play this game. And I'm getting beat up. Because, you know, you sort of fall into yeah, this it like, just like that. this whiny mentality yeah, yeah, where you're like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I was like, I was so, I was so, like, uh, like it, 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 I, I finished my Thai food, but I was pissed. Yeah. I, I was angry eating. My, my, I was like, oh, I can't believe you did that. And, and, here, <laughs> angry and, and, eating. and here's what's hilarious. Did you have a plant-based meal? Because that would have been so oh, that, 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 terrible. That would be, yeah, no. Uh, it's well within any everyone's paradigm to yeah. attack me. This is not. This is not like it does. This is yeah. not crazy. But here's the thing: I was looking through the log, and it looked like basically he didn't do it and then he undid his action and then did it. <laughs> wow well i mean but terraforming mars though i mean we you know it has it has famously been discussed the the attacky elements of terraforming mars are, have not been very well received because they often it, that is mm-hmm. the dick kind well, of well, he, interaction where a lot of times it feels like it's all optional mm-hmm. and it feels like the designers threw it in there because they're like, oh, uh, we need to make people interact. Oh, so how about there's this? Wait. And some some could make an argument that no, it's a it's a worthwhile check and balance. Yada but, but, yada yada. See, so uh, with that though, like you know, he attacked me, I attacked him. The only person who really benefits is Trey. Of course. Yeah, you know, and, and and he's one. I and, bet Trey texted Matt and said, "You better drop that asteroid on Paul." I bet you just I, watch. I, you I, just I, watch. That 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 I do not know. You know, like he's, <laughs> no, he's on his he cruise right now. That. He wouldn't do that. He no. <laughs> and he would uh, say respect. That's right. He didn't say respect like that. But like you know, so it, it was just it was just one of those things where I was like, oh, <sighs> yeah, do deep I, breath. Because because I am having a good time playing it, but like you know, but then all of a sudden, pow, like. Are you really having a good time, Paul? No, that means you were having a good time. You know why? Because otherwise you wouldn't have cared if your plans maybe, went away. Maybe. But like you were sort of, you were in it and you were feeling it and the stakes, like those plants meant something to you. Like it, it was, I was about to like, you know, I was about to, what made it worse was like I went first. So I could have just made my forest uh, and and then hit Matt. Chose not to do that. That's I, the thing. I, I when you're chose like, not to do that. When you start to frame yourself as like someone who took the is, high road, took the high road in gaming. That's also often the, especially in our group. Uh-huh. Let's be honest, sure, in our sure. group. That's when it, that's when it kind of is like hmm, stings a little bit. Yeah. Um, like I currently okay. Well, I guess let's just air all our grievances of our <laughs> online. No, uh, I'm playing. I'm currently playing a game of 1830 with Matt. Oh sure, sure, sure. And um, some other someone from our uh, someone from our Discord and actually two people two people from our Discord. I'm so sorry. 
Um, but uh, oh, by the way, uh, to, to that effect, Matt goes. I don't know why we we play anything other than 1830. Like 18, like it, that's what he's saying right now. Yeah, like 1830 is the best uh, 18xx. There's no other reason to play any. Well, other. it is a classic. And what so what's been interesting about this playthrough is that um, there's someone who one of the two people from our Discord. He's very, very, very experienced with this. Like he mm-hmm. knows. Like he is playing on a level that I don't play on. Sure. So what's happening is that he's saying like, oh, if you do this, then Matt can buy this train and then so-and-so can buy this and you can open up that and then sell that and then that allows this open and then that way that tile will be available. It's like, boom, 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 boom. Mm-hmm. Like, like he knows Matrix. Like, like steps and steps and steps. And he's like, well, you know, this game happens to be like one of the most studied 18xx's, mm-hmm. which sure. is why. Um, so um, that's, I, it's, I think it's, it's amazing to see the layers of strategy that someone can think about the game at. And I would, it's funny cause I would love to get to that place, but I want to do it like in my, I want to like, I'm not the sort of person that wants to study a game, sure, sure, et cetera. Sure. Anyway, the point of this is that the like, laundry, the, what happened was <laughs> I, um, I was going to start up, I was going to do my own thing and start my own companies. And then I didn't, because we're, there's someone who's who's very new, and Matt's pretty new to it too, and so it sort of was like a tutorial session, sure, sure. you know. And I was like, "That's fine, okay. I won't I won't bid on that private. I'll bid on this one." So I guess stuck with a PRR, which is one of the companies. And I'm like, "Okay," and I'm just sort of like just doing my moves, but I'm also like traveling, so I'm not really paying that much attention. I'm just sort of like doing the best that I can, and um, I buy a two train because we're in the phase two. Sure. And I look today, and I was like. I have no trains. <laughs> oh, it rusted? They got to four already? I never even got to play in the threes. I never had access to the three trains. Oh, wow. And I wasn't mad. I actually thought it was very funny. But, but there was a mad. part of me that was... Well, no, there was a part of me that was like... I was like... I, I was weird. I'm not very. I'm not feeling competitive about this game, but there was a part of me that was like, I... I, t- I, I, I entered in an auction on a company I didn't even want. And now you all have rusted my trains. <laughs> But actually, I wasn't. It wasn't bad. It was just one of those. It was one of those things where you're like, you're like I am a saint here, That's and right. this is what you. It's like we become mothers. Like I do, I do everything for you, and this is how you repay me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, no. I, 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 I'm, I'm curious if Matt can listen to this, and like I would confront would. him, and, and just say like, dude, why'd you do that? I just said like, not cool. That's all I said, which is fine. But like, I, I, if I were to express what I really felt, his response would be, well. You should have made a game harder. <laughs> By the way, I'm really excited that Matt is saying things like 1830 is the only game that that should be played because that just means that hopefully his 18xx window is opened up again and we can get a whole bunch of 18xx uh, he's, uh, plays. He's, he's gonna be traveling soon, my friend. Ah, and, that's true. So, um, I, speaking of 18xx, uh, the I think the last game that I want to really mention uh, for me personally because I haven't played much is that I did play an online game of City of the Big Shoulders, which I think I oh, mentioned last sure, week. Sure. Yeah. And I haven't been playing City of the Big Shoulders since I got into 18xx. And I mentioned last week that it's just so much fun to play it again. And it really is a super fun game. It's more than just a quasi-18xx mm-hmm, simulator. Sure. There's like a lot of really fun decisions. And um, I'm playing against um, three people. I don't... I, maybe one of them's on our Discord. Um, I don't remember. When I signed up, it was like... A, I don't know. <laughs> I don't sure. remember. I don't know what... I think maybe I was drunk when I signed up. So if it, if it is someone from our Discord, I apologize for acting like I don't know who you are. But um, I just haven't done the research to see who I'm playing with. But I'm basically playing with strangers. Great. <laughs> and, and someone from our Discord. Or perhaps someone that I talk with all the time That's on our right. Discord. <laughs> but um, Ben's very hungry, everyone. So I apologize. I'm very hungry. But um, I was just... There's this one guy who... They're yellow. That's all I know. It's like their their color is yellow. You're, 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 <laughs> I'm blue. You're, they're yellow. You're, you're selling it, Ben. <laughs> I'm blue. They're yellow. We have a green player and um, maybe a red player, but um, <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember. But uh, the yellow player does the whole thing where he buys my stock mm-hmm. and then dumps it and lowers my value. And then and this is like I was like, okay, this person really knows what they're doing because they just had like. Their value was just like just going up and up and up, and it's like eight hundred ahead of me. I was like, oh, they're they're just cruising to the end. But I have to say, here's why I really like it. See, the big shoulders. At the end of the day, I lost, but by only thirty seven dollars. Oh. Which, by the way, that's pretty cool. Cool. 
that was really cool. And at one point we were a dollar away. And I was like, oh, if you, this guy, if he hadn't dropped my stock price, I probably could have won. But, you know, City of Big Shoulders, I think people should revisit it. It's really okay. fun. Cool. Really fun. Sure. Really exciting. It's a good time, you know? Yeah, no. You can play it on, online, right? Yeah, I could play it online. It's weird because I don't play a lot of too much on Board Game Arena because I do find that ultimately I like to play with people I know. Mm. So I don't often just like go and try to um, play with strangers. Mm -hmm. But I think I may have to start doing that more in order to get these plays. I tried to pl start up a game of Sky Mines and no one wanted to play with me. I was so sad. No, they probably knew. I know. They, you probably... Like, they probably knew that if they played with me, I would probably roast them on this podcast exactly. for aggressively. They're like, oh, oh, they're like I don't want to make a wrong move because then Ben will complain on the uh, podcast. Or he's looking too thirsty with this guy mind. <laughs> um, I want to talk about something, though. Okay. Something that's let's, been let's on my it. mind. Like This is this is a laundry episode, everyone. So eh. I've I've always wanted to do an etiquette episode on Game mm, Brain. Sure, sure, sure. It's, it's, we've done it before, but I just wasn't part of them. <laughs> and I've always wanted to do one. And recently, I don't know, recently I had a moment where I, I was like, I feel like I've got to say something. And okay. I, I wrote a whole thing, I'm a here. screed on Board Game Geek. Uh, I, yes, yes. Legendary. About finger etiquette. <laughs> I think finger etiquette with board games is an issue. And I feel like it's time that we said some hard truths. Hard about, truths, okay, everyone. everyone. About like the fi fingers, what we do with them where we put them, what we put on them, and how they touch our game our game pieces. Okay. Remember, everyone, we're t on this episode, we're talking about generational trauma <laughs> and, how, and how sometimes it comes across on our board game. You know, listen, but. I would have been I would have been <laughs> happy continuing on this path of feeling wronged, but like I've, I can only do so many Game Brain episodes where I complain about being wronged on this show. Yeah, no, like, no. I literally do it. Like, once a month, I have an episode where I complain about direct aggression or being wronged, sure. and I just, I feel like I need to... I, this is how we stop the trauma. Well, we're, we're just going to move to, like, being wronged, but in petty ways. Okay, Petty, 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 petty grievances. So, like, I don't know. I don't know if if this bothers you in the same way because you are a consumer of games, but you don't op you don't sure, often sure. buy them. Yep, yep. But even then, I don't know if this is like a post pandemic thing or whatever. But I'm really grossed out by pe what people do with their fingers and how they touch games. Like, it really bothers me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I'm being unreasonable. Or if this is something that a lot of other people feel and it's like, no, everyone's afraid to say it because they don't want to be mean to people. Sure, sure. No. But like, you know, I see people, they like pick their nose and then they, they pick up a card. and then uh, they, you Not know. necessarily in our group, everyone. This is just... It, it, not it, necessarily, it, it, but it, in I've seen, you know, people do things across, across the, across the, the spectrum gamut. spectrum of which you see. Spectrum. Exactly. But like things like that, like, do you ever notice people doing things like that um, that are maybe unhygienic and then touching game pieces that like we're all touching, et cetera? And so, does that ever bother you? So here, here is a, 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 an example of that's not game related, but I think is literally in your finger. Uh, so one day, uh, some friends and I, uh, we went to Milk Jar, which is a cookie place. Okay. Uh, and uh, we, we got some cookies and we got a glass of milk. Uh, and so to dunk your cookies, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, like we all, we, we take our cookie and we, I don't need that much milk to, to, you know, to just dunk my cookie. So we share this, uh, <laughs> this dunking milk. And <laughs> share <the> dunking milk. <laughs> <laughs> and this one friend of mine, she takes her cookie and, and dips it, but she goes like, third knuckle down into That's the milk so <laughs> and, 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 i don't know i don't like that and then, and then we're like what the hell are you doing and she does not realize that she's done it it's just how she how, how, how she she doesn't realize that she goes all the way in when she dunks it, it, like you know and so in her when she's growing up like it, it might not be third knuckle it may be to have that, any finger in the mill yes, yes. it's weird you're like any any just knuckle just practicality like now you have wet fingers any knuckle is wrong any <laughs> any finger in, in, in milk is wrong especially if you're sharing it especially because it's already like a shared dunk is already a bit 
you know but like I think sometimes with like food if you're cooking food with a friend yeah. like you taste like well, I'll have like if, or if the milk is a dip and you're not double dipping like you, you share dip all the time with people right right and even and honestly there are times when like a in like a circle of friends like there there can be like a moment where someone says I'm just gonna double dip and you're like I don't know for some reason like the act of like with communal eating there are infractions that i'm i usually can look the other way sure, sure. for and i don't it doesn't bother me but like something like oh, that though uh, there's something about wetness this, liquid and wetness like fingers like, going into and dirt under fingernails that's what it comes down to like you're like oh this is uh, just fingers it, fingers in the milk uh, and so she, uh when i called her out because one must you know she was like oh crap and, and, we, and we just gave her we just we just piled on and gave her so much crap for the rest of the evening yeah. and i still do that today when, uh when we hang out like you know if, if there's an opportunity to talk about fingers and milk it's uh That's, yeah but i do think that for just like her sometimes people are in are blind to the things that you know yeah. that they do and i think that for me what's frustrating is that like I try very hard to ride that line between like advocating for myself and mm-hmm. what I would mm-hmm. like like for, have for people to handle, especially the games that I own mm-hmm. because they cost money and you know like for you sure. don't want people. It's a combination of like with this etiquette stuff. It's a combination of both unhygienic practices and also just destructive practices. Oh, sure, sure, sure. And destructive sounds very dramatic, but it's like people have Frito, not Frito, but Cheetos stuff on their fingers. And they touch a card. That's destructive because that could compromise the secrecy of mm, something. Yeah. And so like these games, they go out of print once they're out of print. It's just like there's expenses mm-hmm. and it's just, so you want to like advocate for like, Hey, this is my property. Can you please treat it respectfully? Mm-hmm. But you also like, I also don't want to create an awkwardness mm-hmm. in the, um, and the game in the game vibe. Cause you know, game night is mm-hmm. a lot of about, it's about vibe and fun. You mm-hmm. don't want to be like, someone who's overbearing you don't want to be like a Nazi mm. you want people to want to play with you sure, and want sure. to come and play but you want to also be like stop that but like what's so funny with etiquette when you talk about etiquette is that it's the people who are creating doing the etiquette infractions are in some senses being the rudest sure. whether they're being meaning it that's it, sort of like the harshest word I'm yeah, not trying yeah. to be harsh but they're the ones who are are doing something that is a brooch of Mm -hmm. etiquette yeah and then so really as they are the ones who are doing the infractions like we (laughs) the ones who are great people (laughs) morally (laughs) non-finger in the milk dunkers (laughs) like we are the ones who should be most offended but and yet it seems like a lot of times when you call out etiquette Mm -hmm. infractions they're the ones who are most of it it's almost like it's worse to call it out it's because it's more ungracious it's like a bigger offense to be Mm -hmm to make someone feel uncomfortable than it is to, than to actually like ruin someone's stuff or be unhygienic. Like, and this is, this is where uh, it comes down to feelings again, back yeah. to full circle. Like I think I, a solution that used to work was light shaming. <laughs> <laughs> you just, casual to light shaming. Yeah, yeah. Like casual to light shaming. Like, you know, uh, where you would say something and you would shame that, that person. And like my, like the cookie thing, the, the cookie dunking we shamed she will not do that again right that's great uh, uh, and and and, and she, you're also direct with her and yeah. you were also you can and your tone was light-hearted mm-hmm. so she knew it was not a it was not you weren't it was, condemning her as a person it's, a, it's, it's action it's about right. action so like, i think what's happened is in an attempt to spare people's feelings like you know uh we avoid light shaming where they're you know like like I'm not a person. I'm not a high shame person, and I don't. I try not to use that in my interactions right. with people. However, like there was one time I was driving rush hour, and I don't know if I've ever told the story on, on on. Anyway, if if I did, I apologize. But someone uh, was making a left turn from the middle lane, Ugh. and in rush hour traffic, <laughs> that's a high shame situation. I'm sorry. And, and and you know, and I was like going, "What the hell's happening?" And I go like, "Oh, I'm supposed to honk right now." Yeah, and I'm not. I'm going to honk right now, and it's not going to impact the person at all. They're just going to stay there and do what they're going to do because they're being a jerk about it. It might impact them. But I will say, if I don't do this, I'm being complicit in saying that this is okay. I have yeah. to, for everyone else, I have to say, this is not okay. You will be called out for doing this. 
Yes, and, and because the thing is, if you don't honk in that moment, yeah, exactly, they may think like, "Ooh, God, I really messed up." Okay, never knew. Anyway, I moved on. They won't say to themselves, "Oh my God, I, I was this was like so awkward and mortifying." You know, they like there's a chance you might elicit that, and you might be able to make them. You might be able to associate societal pressure with doing the wrong thing or you might just generate like a totally diffident response oh. from them where they say fuck you yeah. like i'm doing whatever i want i'm american yeah. but but, but I, i'm actually just talking about like let, let, imagine look, i'm gonna use random examples let's say elder is uh double double dinking double dipping you know right. the milk okay uh if i don't say something to elder loudly so everyone can say maybe trey goes oh this is okay or exactly so so there's this kind of like enforcement of like creating the quote unquote culture that you want yeah and so so this is where the removal of light shaming first of all i'm not a light shaming advocate i'm just saying there are uses like well the thing is this (laughs) actually the fact that even using the word shame Uh sort of does imply that we are like looking down on the person as it is and and there needs to be like a a mindset of like hey i'm giving you a note right mm-hmm. now like like, like I, this has nothing to do with how i feel about you as a person i i love you as a person which is why i'm gaming with you but you should know that you shouldn't be doing this and and, and with that uh i feel like the way it's easier for a friend group is if you can couch if you can wrap it in humor yeah that that's so the behavior is highlighted you know vibrantly vibrantly <laughs> enough that you should remember this mm-hmm. and then y- everyone will go like oh i will not no one in that group mm-hmm. for the rest of their lives will dunk shared milk with to to the third knuckle yeah i'm serious like it, it was it was really funny it was you know it, it's memorable <laughs> <laughs> and the person was appropriately mortified and, and i will never do that like you know that if i did if i didn't do that if i didn't create that moment i might have like gone the hypocrite hip, you know the well, what's your group called the hypocrite party which by <laughs> the way i'm sure as we because i'm gonna go through what i feel like are really big uh-huh. finger infractions sure. and i will say like i am sure that i have committed these mm-hmm. infractions because some of these things happen so Without our awareness. Sure, exactly. You know, especially as we are engrossed in a game. Mm-hmm. Sure. Like, I'm sure that I've, I've, mm-hmm. I've done this. But if I have the ability to monitor myself, there are certain, there are certain things that are like unforced errors that we, yeah. like, it, like you just can, you can just stop yourself from doing, you can see it mm-hmm. coming and you can stop yourself. Yeah. And that's what I really am sure, going to sure. try to like address. Yeah. But like, it's hard. It's hard because you, for me, I, uh, yeah, because I, I, it's weird. There's some people I could call out. Like, I feel like I could call you out. If you're doing something, yeah. I'd be like, Paul, could you not do that or whatever? Absolutely. Because I, kn- I think because, because you have that mentality of like, you have to address something right there at that moment. Mm-hmm. I know that therefore I can do it to you as well. And I can maybe even say respect. <laughs> <laughs> but there's some people who you feel like if you do it to, they're going to res- resent you. Yeah, and they're, no. I think they're probably people who are more sensitive about being called mm-hmm. out in public right which is that's fine that's like whatever led you in your life to that moment mm-hmm. in time you know like we're, we, we're not all we are all built differently and mm-hmm. we all respond to these things sure. differently but that's where it's like hard and it's like you don't want to pull someone to the side and be like by the way or whatever it's hard so that's why i feel like it's also good to do these etiquette things because that way no one has to be directly called out mm-hmm. at a game night and embarrassed. But now like people can hopefully hear this and think, Oh yeah, like this is something that like I do. And I didn't, I didn't even think about how it could actually be making the host of this game night feel incredibly uncomfortable. Yeah. No, it, it, it like I'm a person who's, I try to be forthright. Yeah. I, I try to be forthright when I believe the person can handle the forthrightness. Yeah. And when I when I can't be do that, I'll try to an indirect way. And if I can't do that, I character assassinate. Those are the, <laughs> that's, 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 that's the three the, the three. forthright, you know, uh, like roundabout way assassination. That that's, that's, that's the way people do it. Like I'll say it out loud, but everyone does this. <laughs> everyone does. This. It's kind of true. Because by the way, the thing is this is like if you are like a if you are like a frequent um, violator of generally like well 
well-known etiquette practices, if you if you violate etiquette frequently, you have to just accept the fact that people are going to start talking shit about you behind yeah. your back. And then you're going like, to have That's a just how it is. And then you have a reputation. And you know what? I always talk about this with muscle cars. Mm. I hate muscle cars. Okay. Good I don't know. care. I don't care if other people like them. That's fine. Mm. Everyone can choose. But I personally hate them. I think they're like loud and annoying. And I think that like really, this is what I always say. I've said this a million times on Watcher Crappens. If you drive a muscle car, you're an asshole. <laughs> and if you're not an asshole, you have to be comfortable with the fact that driving a muscle car makes you look like an makes asshole. Makes you look like an asshole. Sure. Because I can't tell you, you go on the 170 sure. up there, you go into the valley in the 170, and it's just like fast and the like furious. And it's just it's just muscle cars just driving. Talk it that's where you, that's mm-hmm. where that generational trauma comes from right there. It's like like it's not through board gaming, it's through like hitting that car, like hitting the gas pedal and having a loud car and just like I'm like, oh God, it's the worst. And I know many nice people and wonderful people who have muscle cars. And I'm like, you're a great person. But just know People see you as people are gonna see you as an asshole. I'm sorry. People do, muscle car drivers do not like to hear that. But I would say that the majority of non muscle car drivers that are on the road think that muscle cars are, people who drive muscle cars are assholes there you go that's just a that is my hot take uh, uh, character assassination character assassination <laughs> so like if you violate etiquette yeah no here which is what muscle cars are doing sure noise pollution no loud aggressive driving mm-hmm. you know i mean it's, it's like a joy when you see like a mustang going at like a normal speed well you know uh if if you're uh, if you're side two side notes if you're muscle car and you're having the look at me you know what people are gonna do they're gonna look at you they're not yeah. gonna, they might not think the way. And I know it, it. I know that the the purpose of driving like that and having a loud car is is about something pretty deep, mm-hmm. and it's about it's about something that it's not just about like oh they're an asshole. I know that it, it's there's 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 shit that it goes into that. There's like so, societal shit. Well, again, yeah, generational trauma, everyone. Generational okay. trauma. With but Paul that being ben. said, <laughs> you're still being an asshole. Yeah, you know. Uh, uh, side note: This is just back to character assassination. Yes. So it goes character assassination, and then what happens is you get a reputation that you don't know about. Yes. And then all of a sudden, when people are comfortable enough with that reputation, they'll say it to your face, and you go, "I'm not that person." But <laughs> but but there's this whole bunch of like dialogue and like. Uh, or you stop being invited to game night. So that's actually well. So that's the other thing is that that's actually I think the why it's important to pay attention to etiquette because a lot of times if you say if you go on to bgg a lot of times if you talk about some experience that you had it doesn't have to do with etiquette even it could be like i was playing and this person just like cut me off from whatever and a lot of times people say well my first my first piece of advice is stop playing with people like that mm-hmm. if people if you play with someone who cheats people will always say well just don't play with those people so what eventually happens is, is that like no one wants to make someone feel bad. But then what happens is that rather than deal with the situation, they just it's stop avoidance. getting invited. Yeah. It's a, you know, it's the simplest thing. Avoidance is the simplest of conflict sol- a resolution. Yeah. Because also like a game is a social thing. And if mm-hmm. people are not, if not everyone, if not everyone is partaking in the social pact of participating and what it requires to participate in a game, why would you keep inviting someone who is not doing that? 100%. Like, you know, a lot of people in a lot of things, like, just want to do stuff with people they like. Yeah. That's the, that, that, that's the secret of life, everyone. People want to do stuff with people they like. So if you do things that make you unlikable, whether you know it or not, that's going to impact your life. Yeah. I think what's where I think where the calling out, et cetera, becomes really hard is with people who are like, maybe newer to the hobby or people who are you're trying to bring in mm-hmm. and so you're trying to make this like a welcoming thing because you know you you know that they could get the bug and they are so fun and you know they can have great table presence but like you don't want to have their experience when they're sort of still in this tentative place of are they going to like dive into the hobby you don't want to associate it with like lots of like you know, uh, like, oh, don't bend the cards. Don't touch that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Like, you want it to be, like, a fun experience. Well, and I-, I have a solution for that, too. Yeah, I would love to hear it. So uh, one of the things that happens is, like, when you call someone the wrong name, when you've just met them, where you, you're like, this person's name is Jonathan, not John. So you say, like, oh, 
hey john and and then someone else goes yeah jonathan mm-hmm. you know uh you know uh, right you know like uh you know, paints murals or whatever. You you, you, you just model wow. good behavior or some something. Like. Yeah. And so, once again, I I go back to light sh- light shaming. I apologize. You could light shame <laughs> your a person who could take it. So right. the so the other person goes, oh, I'm not supposed to bend these cards. Yeah. You know, like you know, like if if say you bring in a new person to the game and, and you want them to play, but you know, but they're doing these things that are annoying you. You literally bend because they fall. Can you 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 text me, Paul? Uh, can you bend my card so I can shame you? <laughs> and so I, go, I can back and I can say, Paul, please don't bend the cards. Uh, the, something like that. Or, 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 but the thing is that you'd be surprised at how many times people don't pick up uh, this, this, that they are guilty of exactly, doing something. exactly, and, and that's why what you have to do is shame me hard, like shame hard, like die hard, but right. shame hard, but in a funny way. Mm-hmm. Such that, like, okay, fine, Ben. I'm like, and, and and then you know, I, I have well, I have found that, like, I was gonna talk about like my methods of of like fixing these things towards the end, but I'm gonna talk about it now. Like, one thing is to establish like very big, bold parameters at the beginning, sure. where I will say, hey, everyone, I did this with Iggy a lot when I first got Iggy. It was such a rare game. Uh-huh. And I would say, hey, everyone, um, no eating or drinking at this table. It's just that this is a rare game. Mm-hmm. And sure. I just don't want like these. It's just I don't mm-hmm. want sure. anything to get ruined. So sorry. I'm, and I'll just I'll I'll die. And I'll, I'll sort of throw myself on a sword. I'll be like, sorry, I'm going to be a real Nazi tonight. Like, sure, sure. this is just the way it is. You know, I know. <laughs> I know it seems excessive, but like, just please indulge my 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 craziness mm-hmm. you know please sure, indulge sure. Yep, yep. my um anal retentiveness in yeah, this yeah. moment not craziness and um i feel like that's good because it takes it off of them yep yep they're, do- they're doing i don't want fun. yeah because by the way as much as i'm sitting here i don't want my guests to feel uncomfortable i don't want them to feel and upset. yet i'm still here and yet you're still here <laughs> so sometimes i'll take it on that way yeah that's good like, i think that's good and you know obviously you can sleeve your games but like you can only i mean i'm not gonna sleep every single game yeah, 100%. I have, you know yeah um so I think that's that's the best way is you just establish straight up uh, like no please don't do this, mm-hmm. um, you know like bending the cards that's that's tricky I think you I think in the past when I've seen someone bending a card I will usually say something like hey I'm so sorry I this is my this is just like my OCD but like could you please stop bending that card because it's like it's literally killing my soul right now you can't bend cards and usually like if you sort of like again take it on frame you. it like this is me i'm a neurotic you know mess right now that's right you know you you, you just you just go into your people pleasing mode <laughs> <laughs> it's usually helpful yeah it can be it, like like you know if you can if you could carry the awkwardness right then you know you save the other person from carrying as long as they are receptive and really cognizant of wanting to do the right thing because there are yeah. some people who for all of it are just in their own heads they're not paying and, attention and and so like you know that's when you have to shift to like medium shame <laughs> <laughs> which can be done as well like you know like yeah you know uh but like but it's all doable like you, you have other uh uh techniques do you not um I don't uh, actually. That may just be. Let me see. I'm looking. <laughs> I'm, wait, no. I said. Uh, well, I think in terms of food, in mm-hmm. terms of issues with food, um, I make sure the food in in my setup. I have a table. I have a mm-hmm. kitchen island. The food is by the kitchen mm-hmm. island, and you know, sometimes you know, people will put out food on the table. If it if the food is like mm-hmm. not going to be too much of an issue, then I, I let it stay. But sometimes I just make sure yeah. the food is in a separate space. My friend Larry, by the way, he has a nice board game table. And it has like a whole sort of like velvet, you know, sure, sure. inside. And the moment he got that table, he established immediately, and he's very good at establishing mm-hmm. like his boundaries. He was like, no one better spill a single thing on this table. And that's now we're coming up on like probably eight years of that table, but it's like, you know, like you all no. food and drink has got to stay far no. away from this table. Well, like, like when, when I play at your place, I never bring food or drink at the table. I always keep it on the island. You do. And, and, and when I walk over, you know, I, you know, I, if I'm thirsty, I just get up, 
Mm -hmm. I don't. I'm. I'm. I'm chill about beverages. Um, Why? Because <laughs> because that's a lot of damage. It is. Um. Uh. Because I think that people tend to be cognizant of beverages. I see. That, so if there's a spill, that sucks. But spills are usually not intentional. It's the stuff I'm talking about more is the stuff that people don't realize that they're doing. Sure, sure. No. So let me talk about Let's my infractions. Yeah, this, this is the list that I put up on BGG, but I want great, this way we great. can we can dig into it. Um there this is not this is a numerical list, but it's not in order of anything. Sure, it's just not in order of importance. It was the number when, when they came to me. So I said the first thing was obviously powdery coatings so don't bring powdery coatings this goes for people i say who are either hosting a game night if you're hosting a game night and like i'm and someone's bringing a game don't put out powdery snacks sure. and if you are coming to a game night don't bring powdery snacks sure um i'm talking about like cheetos that's like the number one culprit right sure you know like or, or doritos powder donuts. Yeah. powdered donuts Cool, cool Ranch Doritos, anything that leaves like a residue, wasabi peas. Wasabi peas, people don't often think oh, of. Oh, interesting. Wasabi peas are like, yeah, yeah, no, no. you don't think of them as being powdery, but they what happens is, coat. yeah, as your fingers, your fingers just get, they, they, they start to devolve yeah. and you get wasabi peas on you. Like, don't, this is, it's been said on every podcast. It's been said everywhere. The Cheetos thing, but people still, they mess it up. No. Don't bring the Cheetos. Sure. Don't bring the Doritos. They're delicious. Cheetos, one of my favorite. Cheese doodles, anything pirate's that, booty. I love them all. Uh, Not for game night. Anything that can be described as dusted. Dusted. Yeah. And especially because one downside about that is that if you're, if you're going to have them, have them in a separate zone and be like really good about setting it like about rinsing your fingers under okay. a faucet because another downside to those powdery things is not just that they are destructive but a lot of times in an attempt to be somewhat like clean hygienic people will lick their fingers yeah they're like oh there's residue let me just lick my fingers and wipe them on my pants or something sure it's like that's not that's a little bit of a lateral move for me that's right. not better <laughs> it's not better <laughs> so we're gonna say this if for nothing else no powdery snacks. Okay. Right. I think that's a, that's an easy one to avoid. I it's think fair. most people know about that, yep. you know. Chocolate. Okay, mm -hmm. so now move on to chocolate. I'm a chocoholic. Mm -hmm. I love, love, love chocolate. But chocolate, you have to be careful with, with a board game, right? Sure. It melts. It gets everywhere. If you're going to do a chocolate, it can be like an M&M. &M. Mm -hmm. It could be an M&M. &M. It could be like a chocolate-covered almond or something like that right or one bite Her hershey kiss where you don't touch the chocolate right if you're a lot of times actually um there are peanut butter cups yep chocolate peanut butter cups which i love too. like like every time those show up at game night i love it but like you have to like if you're gonna have chocolate peanut butter cups like do it carefully right the, the way the way i describe it is like i'm not peanut butter but like you know uh trey joe's peanut butter cups are a big popular Thing yeah. in our group like the I way I, the way i say it, like make sure that the time in your hand is minimized yes so basically from uh from uh container to hand to mouth should be under two seconds yes uh anything <laughs> <else>? <laughs> yes so and like it's so okay by the way let's let's dive into this a little bit more which is that i think the trader joe ones are really small right yep. they're like button size yeah, yeah. so only only take a few at a time because if you have too many you have to hold them you have to hold them yep only take what you can keep in your fingers for max two seconds that's right okay and before you and then keep on monitoring those fingers like just keep on monitoring okay if you if they're peanut butter cups that have wrappers or a little bit larger then what you do is you peel a little bit of the side of the wrapper right and then you kind of pop it in your mouth so you can actually theoretically do the whole thing with minimal touching of the chocolate. almost no touching that's right. of the peanut butter cup so just remember chocolate melts chocolate melts and the thing is that what's good about chocolate melting is that most people don't like melty chocolate on sure. their fingers so they're really people are generally good about getting it off their fingers but with chocolate my experience as a seasoned chocoholic is that like the insidious part about chocolate is that it gets onto a random part like a I little, see. a see. little fleck falls off and winds up on the side of your hand. Oh, and you smear, and then you're smearing. And like, by the way, this is also a good note for your 
your life. clothes. Just life. Just life okay, I'm saving you from a chocolate stain right That's now. That's right. Yeah, like, and remember, if people, you get a bad reputation, people talk about you and you people don't know talk. why. People talk, okay? Most people are pretty good with chocolate, I have to say. Okay, but great. I'm just, I feel like you have to, it has to be stated. I think acknowledge it at least. Let's like cross every T and sure. dot every I sure, sure. for the people who might tune in and say, oh. But chocolate's okay. No. Chocolate is like, you have to just know the chocolate you're working with. Oh, very good. Some very good. chocolate is hard and you'll be totally fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. But like, again, if you're eating chocolate, probably a different zone and just monitor those fingers. And uh, don't lick your fingers if they get chocolatey. Yep, yep. Don't lick your fingers for any have situation. Napkins. Have napkins. Okay. Donuts. We have to talk about donuts. Oh, you know what, Ben? We do. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about donuts. So um, every now and then we do a game day that starts at like 10 a.m., mm -hmm. right? And so usually someone brings donuts. I have brought the donuts. I've I brought donuts to Matt's before other someone always brings donuts sure. because it's like it's the gracious kind thing it's what a good person would do is bring donuts and it shows that you were you were you're giving something to the group you are um, honoring and celebrating the specialness of being able to game sure, at 10 sure, in the sure. morning it's a wonderful wonderful gesture however however <laughs> if you're eating a donut be mindful that's right okay glazed donuts are delicious but guess what you're getting sticky ass sugar on your fingers and it gets right onto the pieces. Like I, I've seen it happen so many times. Sure. I've experienced this. And, and prone to the lickage too. Prone to lickage. And then on top of that, just as like a side thing, people don't, people think like, oh, the powdered donuts where the danger is. But people don't realize the freaking glazed donut. I can't tell you how many times people eat those donuts and then they start talking and then that, that glaze, the glaze flakes mm -hmm. sure, sure. everywhere. The, the aerosol. It's like everywhere. <laughs> and even just, even if you don't talk, just biting into them, they're going to flake everywhere. Sure, so sure. there's like sugary stuff everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So if you're going to have a donut, again, separate zone, you know. At the island. Yeah. I mean, and it goes without saying jelly donuts, frosted donuts, big dangers. That Those aren't, those just are not. Just don't bring them. Those are not even near that. People don't, don't. Don't bring them. So I, my whole thing is I just don't bring donuts anymore. Yeah, no, no. I, I, I understand. <laughs> I understand. I think like a croissant. So a croissant I think I'm okay with because croissants are flaky, but they're not. And they're cultured. And they're very cultured. <laughs> they really elevate the day. <laughs> uh, croissants are flaky, but I, I find for some reason like with croissants, I feel like a lot of people eat croissants over a little plate. I feel like, <laughs> you know. Have you ever noticed like there are certain things that people will eat with a plate and certain things people just eat with a napkin? And I feel like donuts, people don't eat with a plate generally. Uh -huh. They just sort of stuff them in their mouths. Sure, sure. But like a croissant or a piece of cake, people will put on a plate. And yeah. so they're actually like... More contained. More contained. Okay. You know? You know, I'm not learning more about you, but the things I know about you are so much more saturated. <laughs> I'm basically what I'm what I'm doing right now is I'm giving Game Brain listeners a chance to decide whether or not they ever want to listen to my voice again. That's right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, like, we liked Ben, but turns out he's just an asshole. He, like he's a muscle car of a person. <laughs> he is he is terrible. Um I mean obviously but uh croissant flakes, you know, there's butter. There mm -hmm. could be a chance for some grease. I just yeah. feel like if they're just not there, you like, know what it is? It's like there's certain things that when they flake, everyone sees the mess that they're making. It's also visual. You can oh, see sure, those sure. crumbs. Yeah, yeah. But with like a glaze, you might not sugar think. glaze, you don't see it and you don't think of it. Well, one last question. Were you or were you not the president of your French club? I was. Huh. I was. I see. Yeah. So there might so be I some, have some bias. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, just, I'm just making some assertions here. Listen, <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying uh, maybe I do have a bias. Maybe this is my blind spot. I don't oh. know. But if you are doing some light shaming on me, that's right. Noted. <laughs> noted. My behavior will be modified. So you're saying you'd be anti croissant? I think a, like one, I think croissant is donut to me. I, I okay. Uh, for, for I'm me, open to that. By the way, I'm open to that because if my croissant eating is causing stress for someone else, I don't want that. Yeah, like, Do you think there is a breakfast? What would you bring to a morning gaming session that would be? I would bring a jelly donut, but I. <sighs> but, but but here's the thing. I would eat it at the island. I never, I never like, you know, I, I think it just, I think whatever it is has to be eaten at the island or exactly. there has to be a little plate, but I think really at, at the kitchen yeah. at the zone, zone B, That's the right. food zone. Like, like ultimately the only time I'll ever bring food at the table that isn't already there by someone else. Like if, if someone brings gummy bears or 
like the chocolate, you know, like it's already there. I may, but I will never bring food to the place. Yeah. Unless, unless it's on a plate and you eat it with a fork. Yep. Yeah. Like oddly enough, like, um, like poke is actually really good because mm-hmm. it's in a bowl and you can sort of eat it away from the table. It's kind of contained. Mm-hmm. Although one thing I have noticed with poke, uh, and I've been guilty of this is that if you get poke that has like, um, or a salad, even mm-hmm. if it's not poke, the salad leaves can sometimes act like little trebuchets and they will send like, you know, you go stabbing and you go in with your fork or your chopsticks mm-hmm. to get something. And then like a leaf comes out and it's like, and it like throws like yeah. with poke, it'll throw like a, a, like a little like piece of, like Tobiko or something like and it like lands on the board but that's okay like yeah, that's yeah, it's yeah. that's so isolated oh, trebuchet that sounds french it is very french okay. um and by the way l- let's t- let's have an, a disclaimer which is that like accidents happen yep and like you can never have a pristine environment like so this is like everything i'm saying is with the awareness that like you, we're not going to be playing this in like like a lab setting so, <laughs> like this hermetically is sealed hermetically yeah. sealed yeah. we know this just like there's certain things like if you're having donuts eat them away from the game this is all about consideration exactly mm-hmm. got, got um grease grease and oil that's it's tough like you know you have like uh like i guess like wontons fried chicken Fried chicken. You know, it's so funny. The other, like a few weeks ago, uh, Jordan had ordered Popeye's and was eating it near a game. I, the thing is, Jordan, I think, is extremely considerate. I think one of his defining qualities is he's actually an extremely considerate person and he is is a murderer. But he's also like, I think he's very considerate about games. And so he was extremely careful about wiping his fingers all the time. But he he said to me, he's like, he's like, gosh, I probably shouldn't have done that just because it probably made like, whoever's game it was be a little tense yeah yeah, no um which by the way even just him considering that considering the host feelings is i think like yeah like sometimes that's all you want (laughs) you know but um, he's a mensch a murdering mensch murdering mensch that's a a A murder mensch murder mensch that's right so things with oils so by the way olives oh people eat olives i am traumatized by an experience i had i had just bought secret hit I, I didn't even buy it. Someone gave me a secret Hitler. And it was, this was 2015 or so. Sure. It had just come out. I played it a few times. I was like, this is, the, I love the game so much that I brought it with me on a trip. And um, a bunch of us went to a coffee shop and we're like, let's play this game. And so someone at the coffee, someone in our group, um, she had bought a, like a little salad, like a Greek salad or something. Sure. And there were olives in the salad. And she was actually picking out the olives and she was just eating the olives like independently. Mm -hmm. And, um, but then what happens, she was picking up the tiles and the oil from the olives, (laughs) the oil discolored in very slight ways, Mm -hmm. the secret Hitler secret information tiles. And I was like, (gasps) and that's the thing with oil is that like it can, it gets on. And even if you think you are clean, Mm -hmm. Like literally a single drop can have a massive effect. Sure, no. So don't eat oily. Don't bring oily foods. Yeah, yeah. As a snack. Sure. No. Don't eat them near the game pieces. Got it. Got, got it. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, donuts cross over into the oily area sometimes no, no. too. I, I, by I, I the way, hear, I hear you. or even a croissant. Yeah, especially a croissant. Especially. <laughs> <laughs> Especially a croissant. I'm trying to think of other oily things that are really bad. I just think that like olives, sometimes people might not. People may think of olives as like a healthy snack. Sure. And it's like. Uh, like, So one of the things that I make fun of <laughs> all the time is when I watch TV and uh, or even a movie, but it's more most on TV when some character is going to buy a hot dog. <laughs> and and you're like and you go like okay. oh, well, 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 why are you being so crazy because if you ever notice most people eating a hot dog in the, on TV don't put any condiments on it I actually don't often put condiments on my hot dog are you a crazy person <laughs> I just like to think I'm on TV <laughs> <laughs> because like, I go like who the hell eats a hot dog with zero condiments often Z- me what often, often me that's that is crazy to me. And yet yesterday, uh, I was at the sandwich place, and it, it, it's known for you know, like it, it's it's I, I forgot what it's called in Culver City. Uh, and I was eating my sandwich, uh, and then this, these two men 
rode their mountain bikes in. One was sitting outside. The other one comes in and orders for both of them. And they ordered one order roast beef sandwich, two worth, but one of them for the guy outside, only bread and only meat. Wow. And I was going like, you're at a fancy pants, you know, uh, sandwich shop. You, you really <laughs> just do that? And I have to remember, like, you know, like, people like different things. People like different things. <laughs> but, like, if you were to bring olives to a game night, like, I don't, it's not even my games. I would think you're a crazy person. <laughs> well, no, here's... Here- <laughs> I mean, <laughs> olives, it might <laughs> seem strange, but what might happen is someone might put out a nice cheese board. Who the hell reads a cheese board? People do, because not everyone is like Game Brain. Not everyone okay. is like a bunch of slobs like we are. Whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. Light there shame. Are people, there, some, <laughs> what will happen is this sort of goes back to what I was saying before. Like sometimes I might say to someone, I'll talk about board gaming, and someone will say, Oh my goodness! I I've been I've been playing like Catan or Ticket to Ride. I would love to know more. Like, okay, how about this? I'll bring a game over. Like, or, or they'll say I'd love to host a game night. Sure, sure. So you bring your game over, and so they put out a nice spread, like wontons and and olives. Maybe not wontons, but they might put out cheese and olives and little nuts and whatever. And by the way, um, honey roasted nuts. That's powdery, dusted, dusted. Yep. yep okay. Yep, so yep. your planters, honey roasted nuts. That's on the list. That's okay. Right. Bad. Um, but they might put out a nice spread. Yeah. And um, I'm just saying, you know, with us. Be we, cognizant of oil. Be cognizant. Yeah. What I'm saying, when I said a bunch of slobs, because we, you know, we gather for a game night. We eat some snacks or whatever. We show up <laughs> in like our t-shirts or whatever. You know, we are, we're there for the game. But other people actually try to create <laughs> a vibe. A nice environment. Yeah, yeah. People actually like to entertain like, like adults. We're classier ones. So if you're listening to this, you're listening to the classiest podcast we're that you're listening classy. to. We, we went to a Michelin star restaurant <laughs> recently. That's right. Trebuchet, French, croissant, uh, French. <laughs> Are we ready for the next shot to be fired? Yeah. Like, 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 you know, like, Are sure. people still listening? Do people still, do people still respect Hello. my opinion? No. <laughs> <laughs> Is it too late? Are they going to be heavy shaming me? That's right. Okay, fruits and berries. Fruits and berries. <laughs> okay, <laughs> to be fair, one, this okay. is very, very much Ben's <laughs> culinary trauma. So, like, yes, he's going to have some valid points, but understand, <laughs> understand, this is this is this, this okay. is very Ben specific. Let's. Okay, I want to create a disclaimer. I am a strange person. I really hate berries, and I know this. This is what happens every time I say this. Everyone goes strawberries, yes. Blueberries, yes. <laughs> Raspberries, yes. Blackberries, yes. I do like cranberries, um, and there's some other sort of more obscure mm-hmm. berries I'm okay sure, with. Sure. But for like the big ones, mm-hmm. your your big name berries, berries, big I berry. Really, I really hate them. Yeah, I yep. hate them. But that being said, so like whenever anyone brings berries to the table, I'm repulsed. I in fact, um, I have banned berries. Like yeah, like yeah. I some not, some friends have brought berries to to my house before Mm -hmm. for game night and it's like it's it's tough for me to even be around berries but there's also a functional thing like i do i don't think you should have berries around board games sure because they are wet yep they often have to be in fact washed beforehand Mm -hmm. but they're wet they're juicy which means that when you when you eat them juice can come squirting out yeah like you see the little spatter yeah 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 um they gets on your fingers but it also spatters outwards um and in some cases they can stain yeah so they no. can not only be juicy but they stain blueberries are probably the worst berry to have sure or maybe raspberries blackberries blackberries i think that ju- but blueberries I, I blueberries i think are juicier than blackberries right we, we can do a test we can bring uh, berries you can, to your house you can report back <laughs> that's I will, right i think so the point is this like just put them in the put them in the zone like the, 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 that's right. Put them in the food zone. The, the, the food zone, the, the very zone in Ben's house is your car. <laughs> just, just put them like put them with the donuts. Mm. Put them with the croissants. You yeah, know, sure. put the, I, the cheese board with the olives. Mm. That's it's fine. Put them in the zone, but just know when you come back to the table, wipe your hand, yeah. run them under the faucet, do something basic. Like, and like, I, I'm really tempted to just like eat like a a raw like sweet onion at the gate <laughs> <laughs> you know things like apples things like apples like a- like apple wedges not a problem i think mm, even sure. biting into an apple like you might get some splatter some spat spatter but like which i which i don't love but like um i think citrus citrus could be risky actually sure, if sure. you have like yeah. some orange wedges just that's i mean that stuff can shoot across the table yeah yeah no i hear <laughs> so i think just all the juicy stuff and you um, know and citrus has oils 
Yeah, you know, uh, elder sometimes will bring like a carton of pineapple. That's mm. I think okay. Because fork, 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 and it's over a carton. Yeah, you know. So I, I'm I'm okay with yeah yeah that. something like that. Sure. Um, here's something that I feel like people do not talk about. I'm having uh, the best time. This uh, is like I, my I, favorite. Like <laughs> going down a list of etiquette issues. <laughs> Late night at the, uh, with Grain Brain, the etiquette. <laughs> okay. I don't know how else to say it except say um, itsy bitsy snacky things. <laughs> People don't realize this. Like, if you have a bag of chips mm-hmm. and at the bottom of the bag of the chips, gotcha. you got itsy bitsy snacky things. Yep. If you have a little thing of peanuts mm-hmm. or sunflower seeds Ooh. or pepitas, that's itsy bitsy snacky things. So you think, what's wrong with Itsy bitsy wait, wait, snacky wait, wait, wait. things. Ben. What's wrong with itsy bitsy snacky? Paul, well, what do you think is wrong with them? I think they get everywhere and they probably have oils on them. That's how that's, uh, that's how I, I, I consider that. Fair, but here's what I think is really what's vile. Vile. Oh, <laughs> not this vile. When people eat itsy bitsy snacky things, they go in usually with a three finger, like uh-huh. usually index, middle, and thumb. Uh, sure, sure. They go in, or uh, maybe it's just index and thumb. Uh-huh. They go into the little bag uh-huh. or whatever it is, and then it goes those fingers into the you, mouth. You have right here a variation on the knuckle dunk in the milk. <laughs> knuckle dunk. Oh, fair, fair. It is the Brian uh, Brian Knuckle. No, what was his name? Doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. I'll try it. whatever his name from American Idol. That's one season. Okay, okay. Um people when you have those little bitsy things no one wants to spill it and in fact people may be trying to not broach etiquette by making a mess on the game so what they do is in order to make sure it gets into their mouth those fingers come in like the spaceships landing on the death star coming into the bay you know it's like it's like it's like independence day when jeff goldblum and will smith get into that ship and they enter the big mothership and they come in that's what the fingers are doing they come on in and they go in and a lot of times they go at least one knuckle but they can go two knuckles they can go two knuckles deep into someone's mouth hopefully multiple times (laughs) And then it's like, let me pick up this card or let me move this tile or let me touch this communal property with my knuckles, my fingers that just went deep into the back of my mouth. Horrific. And in fact, I will just say this. The other day we were at Game Brain. Someone, I don't know who did it, but someone busted out little bags of peanuts or trail mix. Uh And I'm telling you, everyone at the table was eating this stuff. And I saw fingers going into every single person's mouth at one point or sometimes what you get is like this weird drive-by thing where the fingers will it'll be like it'll be in the palm and then you put the palm up to your mouth and then it's like the tongue then has it's like it's like it's coming in and so now it's like all over your palm and i was watching everyone at the table doing it and i was like it was just like i was like you guys are all just sticking your fingers in your mouths and just touching all these pieces it was like this disgusting disgusting <laughs> it was vile when you actually look at it oh sure you, sure sure like it's horrific to see like one of the things that's supposed to be pretty awful to watch in a human is just <laughs> for them to eat yeah like 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 people you know people are it's can it can be very unsexy which by the way is if you are eating by the game uh eat with your mouth closed mm, yeah that's that's just a general good rule for life eat with your mouth yep. closed yeah no Hundred percent. I I think you have turned me away from itsy bitsy. I feel like that's a. I feel like because itsy bitsy seems like the best, right? Like trail mix seems like a a great snack for game night. But, but you get the like literally everyone's knuckles are in their mouth at all times, and it goes on and on and on. And it never stops, and you just look up and there's someone else sticking their fingers deep into their mouth. So th- this I believe is you know an appropriate venue for a light shaming. <laughs> Because someone, someone like puts their trail mix fingers into the mouth, and, and then you go freeze, and then you go look, look, <laughs> look, freeze. look what you're doing. You got, you're under arrest. What, what are you gonna do with those fingers? What are you gonna do with those fingers? You're gonna lick those fingers. And you're gonna touch the piece. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna? <laughs> Everyone at the table go like, in, in some mid version of putting their fingers in their mouth. You go, and then, and then you go like, and everyone will laugh, and no one will ever do it again. I think in our group. There will be at least two people who will do it multiple times over and over again. And by the way, here's another side thing. 
I don't know if I don't know if if this is I don't know how to how to classify this because I feel like it's more than just like a peanut butter. I don't think there's ever a concern about peanut butter at game night, right? But I have no I have seen one time someone was eating a full on thing and it got stuck on their back teeth and they went in while playing the game and they stuck their finger all the way in. To, you know when something gets stuck behind your back teeth? Yeah, sure, sure. And you're like trying to get with your tongue, you can't. So they stuck their finger all the way deep in and scraped it out. I watched them, and then picked their butt and did it again. And they then, went and they start. They just went back to hand holding their cards. Yeah, no. And it was, I was actually repulsed. Um, so <laughs> that's not really a job. That's that's more in the hygiene camp of sure, like sure. be mindful of your fingers. If Which you is have, a sequel to this episode by hygiene. <laughs> well, that's that's coming up next. That's like the second half of this list is like now the the, the cleanliness part because this is all about like the foods. Like sure, be wary of the foods that yeah. you're doing. But like if you've got food stuck in the back of your mouth, that's fine. Scrape it out. But like just run your finger under a faucet or something afterwards. Sure. Like or at least wipe it with a napkin. I mean like just do something. No, I hear you, Ben. Okay. So, oh, you know what? The next item on my list was don't lick your fingers clean. So that's just more of that. Sure, sure. Okay. So itsy bitsy begets. Finger clean. We're now talking about putting fingers in mouths now. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, uh, don't bite your nail- nails at the game table because yeah. it's more fingers on fingers sure, in sure. the mouth. But basically, any finger in mouth is wrong. You really shouldn't. Again, like sometimes it happens. Like if a finger touches the lip, I don't mind if a finger touches the lip. Like, I feel like I, you can't be so rigid, sure. right? But but these, these are considerations, like, you know. It, but, it, like, it's more like really entering in. Okay. You know? I, I, I understand what you're saying. Thank you. I need some yes ands right <laughs> yeah, now. That's right, that's right. Um, so, biting nails, again, it's just, that's a hard one because that's a habit that, you know, if, if, you're, if you're a nail biter, that's, like, really, it's hard to you've been told probably a million times in your life don't do that mm-hmm. so it's not like oh i'm gonna be the one that breaks the cycle for you but if you can <laughs> if you're but, aware of yourself doing it and at a game table just stop but, but you know just just worry about that reputation bad reputation well here we go here's a big one Uh oh it is targeted if it's not going in the mouth where else might it go in the nose in the nose you could have said butthole too but i, I don't I think most people are doing but, that but but, but you know but, the nose I think most people like picking your nose in public is is very shamed mm-hmm. in life. Sure, sure. So most people don't full on pick their nose. People don't usually go in there and really try to get get like a, sure. a booger out. But what happens is there's a more insidious version of nose picking. It's the nostril flick, where you, you it's like if you have like a if you have like a <laughs> this is a great material. <laughs> Like so, if doing like a, I think just uh, like doing a this, like a, like a, like like a, like you know, you've got the back of your hand and you go back and forth over the front of your nose, like uh, that's that's fine. It's neutral. But I think when you do, what happens is sometimes if something is itching a little bit inside the nostril, and you go in there and you kind of like flick, just, you just sort of go in. I'm gonna demonstrate for you, Paul. This is not gonna be pleasant for you to see. Okay. But like. If someone does like a this, oh, I get, a lot of times like you, you, you like, have to demonstrate. I, thumb, I, I, thumb is in the nostril, uh-huh. you, you, and maybe index finger is outside uh-huh. the nostril, and it's like a little like that, it's like yeah. a little like this uh-huh. thing. Like you're sort of you're you know, no, I, like I, I'm I, now wiping my fingers on the chair. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Like, so I think the reason why that's insidious is because it happens so quickly, and you're not even paying attention that like you don't even realize that you're doing sure. it. Sure, no, it's. Uh... But try not to stick your finger in your nostrils while you're touching communal game pieces because it's disgusting. Sure, sure. I'm, I'm, I needed to have a moment of silence there for people to really, for it to be impactful. Wait, wait. Look, look, look. So let, let me do my impression. Please don't put your finger in your nose. It's disgusting. 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 <laughs> and I guess ears too. Yeah, sure. But I don't think ears is as much of an issue. All right, here's the last one. I know it seems like there, it could go on forever, but this last one is one that I think is actually so important and it applies beyond game night and everyone should do this. And I am shocked at how many people don't do it, but I'm even more shocked when people don't do it for game night, which is if you go to use the bathroom, mm-hmm. wash your hands. Oh, really? The way my, <laughs> the way my, so my game table is located about like, 10 feet from the bathroom. If I hear the toilet flush and someone comes out the door three seconds later, I know you did not wash your hands. Also, because I can hear when the, the sink runs. Sure, sure. 
So there are times when I know for a fact that someone has just peed and then they've come back and started playing games again. And that to me is so inappropriate and so irresponsible and just <laughs> gross. Yeah, no. Like that's something that, that would get you uninvited from my house. So like, I, I will say to you that what you're describing is well within the normal asking of humans. Right. But now that's one where I think you, it's like, if you say to someone, did you wash your hands? I don't know. I guess which that was that way. Ah, it's hard to do that one without sounding like a nag. Right. Like, I think that's my biggest thing is that I'm going through this whole thing, but like, I don't want to be a nag, <laughs> but like that's in there. That, so, okay. Let me, let me tell you something. Yep. On Friday, a few days ago, I, I was in New York City. I went to see Chicago, uh-huh. the musical, which I'd never seen on Broadway. Uh-huh. And I was seated behind um, this older couple. And they got drunk. And in the second act, they were just were like talk. They were sure. like just talking. And so I started doing the shh. Because I don't they, mind. They had it coming. They had it coming. They had, they had, they had, I, had themselves I, to blame. And you know what? I gave them the old <laughs> razzle dazzle. <laughs> I think because they were strangers, I didn't mind so much about being a full nag. But I was like shh. And they just weren't listening. And so then I tapped the lady on the shoulder and I was like, I tapped and I go, shh. And there was a group of four actually. And the ladies next to me who I didn't know, they were emboldened by me going, shh. They started going, shh, shh, shh. <laughs> they were going right. nuts. Right. And then the lady goes, could you please stop talking? At one point, she's really, so anyway, when I tapped this lady on the shoulder to be like, shh, her husband turned around and just stared at me like, how dare you tap my wife on the shoulder? Admittedly, in retrospect, I don't think I should have, I shouldn't have tapped on the shoulder because people are like, oh, you put your fingers on someone. But like, you're staring at me like I'm the asshole in this situation, but I'm the one who paid like nearly $200 for this seat for this experience that you're talking through, yeah. you know? But it's like, that's the thing. Like, you don't want to be the nag, but the truth is, it's like, you don't want to be all of a sudden, me, like, you, that the other person is the one who's being thoughtless. Sure, sure. But me as as the host or the owner of the game is now like I'm the one who feels bad about being the nag. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I personally feel that you just say, dude, go wash your hands after you touch your penis. <laughs> Boom. Done. <laughs> Done. Like I'm gonna tell you right now, the people at at, at that at game night will not not wash their hands. <laughs> That you know what we're gonna have an we're gonna have a bathroom shaming policy that's going right, that's forward. Right. Which oh, is, you, you go in your house just so you know uh, things like please no itsy bitsy uh, uh, no snacks. itsy bitsy snacks. And if you come out of the bathroom without washing your hands, you will be heavy shamed. That's because I think that is a heavy shame situation because you should always wash your wash your wash your hands after you go to the bathroom anytime, whether it's game night or not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry mm-hmm. if there's anyone who feels like, well, it depends. I I didn't poop. No. <laughs> no. Wash those hands. Wash right. those hands. There you go. Um, I have some suggestions for some uh real quickly, some some snacks I think are are actually oh, like so not only is there like you I'm know trying to end with a on a note of hope. Exactly. Here, 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 here are some things that you can do, everyone, uh, that will uh improve your uh your chance experience. of getting invited, invited back. To, and I will say, like, uh, you have a coveted a coveted invitation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I think that cheese is actually a, a pretty good snack. Cheese, I think okay. Cheese, one could make, like, maybe, you know, maybe not like a runny brie, but, like, I think, like, cheddars or hard cheeses are good. Sure, sure, sure. Like, you know, like, crumbly cheeses are become a little French bit more cheese. of an issue. But like I think like putting out just like a simple cheese plate is like those are really good snacks. Um, sure. Of course, people are lactose intolerant, so there's that. But, but I think. But don't use those honey uh, glazed uh, peanuts. No, I think you would just do like a large sized almond that's that's like bigger than an itsy bitsy, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, but I think that like you know use your judgment. But I think like a firm cheese would would be sure, like sure, generally sure. a good snack that could yeah. actually be on the table. Yep. Yep. Um and like I, I think that like crackers and pretzels crackers I think cra- like if cheese like if you're into a cheese and cracker yeah but like crackers can often like uh with the bite create dust I but like that dust that... can be like brushed off oh. it's more like it's again it's not destructive how how is how, how sticky how, 
but the dust is a, the dust will the dust will be annoying but it's not it's not well, well, no 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 but like like things that are dusted how is that how is the dust from a cracker different from like a cheeto because the cheeto dust well first of all the cheeto dust is oh, stain, sh- is a stain so like you wouldn't like a cheese it would maybe not be as good but it's like it's like the, it, mm, a lot of times that dust is like gets sticky and gets yeah, the, sugar in the, the, the sugar but i think dust, if you yeah. eat like a ritz yeah, with okay. your or like a wheat thin or, or a triscuit like it'll, it might make crumbs but it's not going to be destructive okay okay yeah and a pre- same with a pretzel great great okay. but maybe not one of those like honey mustard pr- pretzels sure you know I hear you. Um, and I think that like actually like there's a large number of potato chips that are, are fine. Okay. Like especially a Pringle is going to be really good. A barbecue potato chip will not be good. Mm-hmm. Dusted. Right. And like a tor- most tortilla chips are, I think all, all tor- tortilla chips are probably fine. Sure. Right. Again, it's like dry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fine. I think popcorn is largely okay. Okay. Um, Once again, not dusted. Yeah, just use your judgment. Like you don't like a like a yellowy dusted popcorn. No, maybe an olive oil popcorn. Maybe that might be a problem too because oil. Maybe, but I think that like by the way, a caramel popcorn is probably fine because it's so hard. Like, sure, sure. but again, like maybe follow the rules of, of peanut butter cups, which is like, like, like yeah. keep it moving. Yeah, yeah. Or, keep it moving from yeah. finger to mouth. And if it's caramel, like you know, don't don't second knuckle it into your mouth. To try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tr- like it's. <laughs> Popcorn, you do run, and there is like an itsy yeah. bitsy. Like you don't have to like take an entire thing uh-huh. and put it. Just you just be, be mindful. Um, and I think actually, believe it or not, I think actually, this is tricky. But I think a lot of cookies are safe too. Interesting, like an Oreo. Sure, but you know you do run a risk. Like there are some cookies, like like most chocolate chip cookies are good, but you could you could they could melt. You could get some meltiness. So sure. just be mindful. But I think that like by and large, cookies are good. Okay. And especially if you hand out like little plates sure. that keeps crumbs down again, it keeps things contained. Mm-hmm. Um, I have also found that when you hand out little plates, people often make, like to make a little station. Mm. And then when they have a little station, they're like, okay, I eat my food over here in my little station mm-hmm. and I play my game over here. Whereas if you just have stuff around, sure, sure. No, you know, here. Um, and that's why I think something like a slice of cake is actually a, generally okay because yeah. it's going to be on a plate there'll be a fork yeah, there'll be a spoon fork. you know unless there are some some monster right um and honestly oddly enough ice cream because it's in a bowl just don't eat it over the as dangerous as it may seem it's it, it, it's self-contained much it's like self-contained. radioactive waste yeah yeah and again it's so <laughs> you're not like don't do an ice cream sandwich that would actually be terrible because that's the sandwich stick. goes don't do it don't do a cone don't yeah. do a drumstick yeah, yeah, don't no. do a pop Mm-hmm. But a bowl of ice cream, as long as you're you know, careful about dripping. But I think dripping falls more under, more under accident, right, yeah, sure, than sure. breaching out of the kit, right? Like, like it seems to be that uh, the biggest trespass is a lack of consideration. Yeah, I think that's what it ultimately is, because people can eat food around games, and there can be an accident, and it's an accident. But there's sometimes where people eat food in a way that they're just not mindful of how this food could sort of like will always create create a problem yeah yeah here well um i feel like we just talked for a very long time about finger etiquette but i think it was important to get it on the record i i have to say also like you know uh the opinion of ben menicar did not necessarily reflect (laughs) They they don't and by the way i you know what like my therapist says it's better to like Say how you feel, yeah. and then people can react to how you feel, and then you can react to that. You can have like an honest discourse sure. yeah. than it is to try to please people. So if I offended people, to anyone who I offended by the seeming super ornery, um, just know that you probably have in, probably driven me crazy at some point. <laughs> <laughs> You've probably done something uh, that I've had to bite my tongue and said, oh, like, uh, not near my game. It, and if you've gotten to the end of this podcast, like, please write us and tell me what you think. Yeah, it's, tell it's, us what you think. Tell us, like, which which of these things you agree with, which you think are too far and yeah. too draconian. Mm-hmm. Um, I would love to hear what other people do and also what people's strategies are for, like, striking that balance between trying to be a good and welcoming host versus also having healthy boundaries about your own, about games and your property, you know, because yeah, no. it's tricky. It's really, really hard. Definitely. Definitely. That's why I'm just a consumer. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. If you're just a consumer, there's no pressure. But if you own but, but, the but game, then, but as a consumer, then you're responsible to not be a jerk. And you, see, exactly, you're you are responsible to not be a jerk. And as a host, you're also responsible to not be a jerk because you want people to want to 
play with you and invite sure. you to things. Yeah. So I I realize I may have just no, this is sacrificed good. my reputation as a fun the, person uh, to I'm invite say, to like, a game day. Like, if, if there is people talking about you, at least they're talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> No, for real though, I would love to hear what people say about this topic because yeah. I'm so curious. I think board game etiquette is so fascinating. And this is just like one small slice of it, just their, sure, their sure. fingers. I love talking about etiquette. Um, so anyway, uh, I think that's <laughs> I think that wraps <laughs> it up. I think that's I think that's everything that we could possibly have to say about fingers. Mm -hmm. uh, fingers and um our board game. So without further ado, is there anything else that you needed wanted to say about this topic? Oh no, I had a great time. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad you did. You have been listening to Game Brain, produced and edited by Matthew Robinson, Tom Donnelly, Trey Alsop, and Ben Mandelker. Special thanks to Datalist for our incredible music. More on Datalist at GameBrainPod.com. And thanks to Edamar Peleg for our incredible graphics. Be sure to check them out on Instagram at at Kerbaloni or his website Kerbaloni.com. You can reach us by email at contact at gamebrainpod.com. Thanks for listening and go play some games with friends or make some friends with games. As long as those friends have good finger etiquette. Uh -oh.